Hello, my name is Gordon Crawford and I'm a real estate broker here in Central Florida. Today I'd like to describe the home buying process and show you the right way to buy real estate. You know many people want to own their own home but they have no idea how to go about it or even how to get started. You may enjoy looking at listings online and imagining yourself in a beautiful home of your own, but unless you follow the right steps, the home buying process will be frustrating and it can be a nightmare. You know, there are only a few reasons that people have a bad experience when buying real estate, and that is they don't know how to do it and they don't partner with an experienced real estate professional to lead them through the process. Did you know that hiring a real estate professional to help you buy a home is free? That's right. Generally, it costs you absolutely nothing to have an experienced realtor help you find the right home and take care of the hundreds of details required to successfully buy and close on your new home. The seller actually pays the, your agent's fee. So let's go over how to buy a home. The first step is choosing the right real estate professional to work with. And since you know the cost is zero, you should focus on finding a professional with the best track record available. You know, everyone seems to have a friend or cousin or aunt or uncle, neighbor, maybe a friend at church that is quote unquote in the real estate business. You want to be very careful when someone suggests that you use a family member. You know, often they work part time or have very limited experience uh, in successfully closing transactions. So if, if they only sell a, a few homes a year, you're probably not going to get the level of knowledge and experience that you need on your side for a smooth uh, home buying experience. You know, also, in the event that they make critical mistakes or they're simply incompetent or no fun to work with, it's very difficult to fire a family member. So it's almost always better not to do business you know, with personal acquaintances or family. You should look for somebody that's a licensed real estate broker, not just a licensed realtor or a sales associate. Brokers have undergone more extensive training and education, and they've passed more rigorous licensing requirements and exams, and they're typically more experienced than other agents. Working with a real estate broker is generally going to be your best option. Also, ask for reviews and testimonials from past clients. If they can't produce tons of testimonials from happy clients, you should be looking for somebody else to work with. So after you choose the broker you want to work with, the next step, even before you start looking at homes, is to get pre-approved for a mortgage, unless of course you're, you're going to pay cash. Now a mortgage pre-approval doesn't cost you a thing, and normally you can get pre-approved uh, you know, within a day or two. And the lender is going to provide you what's called a pre-approval letter. This letter is going to show you how much of a mortgage you qualify for so that you know what price range you should be shopping in. You know, there's nothing more disappointing than falling in love with a home only to learn that you don't qualify for it. Uh, your broker should be able to refer you to a good lender or a number of good lenders for comparison, and you're going to need to get a copy of the pre-approval letter to submit along with any offer that you prepare, and it's going to show the seller that you're a qualified buyer. So we need to get qualified before we go out and look at, look at homes. The next step is to find a home that you're going to love. And right now there's a very limited inventory of good homes to buy and prices are going up very, very quickly. So it's important that your broker can send you new listings the moment they come on the market. And you know, you've got to take the time to go visit these listings right away. That means maybe getting up and, and looking at properties before work or, or after work in the evenings. If you wait until the weekend to look at new listings as they come on the market, the best ones are going to be gone. Now a good broker is going to take an objective, critical look at both the inside and outside of any properties that you look at. So if your agent simply opens the door to a house and, and walks you through pointing out that, you know, this is the kitchen or this is the bathroom and, you know, look at this big garage, well, you know, he or she's not really adding any value to your purchase and, and probably is more concerned with making a sale than ensuring that you get a good house at a fair price. Nobody needs someone telling them that this is the back porch and isn't the wallpaper lovely. So you want to know what's good, what's bad about the home, uh, so you can be a fully informed consumer. If your agent seems more interested in selling you something, you should stop working with them and find someone that's focused on your needs. So once you find the home that you really like, the next step is for your broker to prepare your offer. And this is the contract for buying the property where you offer a certain price and terms and you propose a closing date. 
you're going to need a small earnest deposit. It could be from $1,000 to $5,000, which is part of your down payment. So you're going to submit a earnest deposit along with your mortgage pre-approval letter. Okay. Now the seller is normally going to respond by either accepting your offer, rejecting your offer, or making some type of a counter offer. So your broker is going to help you negotiate this and get you the best price and terms that, that are available on that particular property. Once your offer is accepted, your broker is going to arrange for inspections. Now normally inspections can include a home inspection, uh, a termite inspection, and, and even a septic inspection if the house has a septic system. And most contracts are contingent upon the successful inspections within a week or 10 days uh, from the day you make your offer. Now, if you're satisfied with the results of your inspections, the process is going to move forward. However, sometimes you're going to find problems or concerns with your inspections. Uh, and if that's the case, you usually have two options. You can either withdraw from the contract and get you know, your earnest money refunded to you, or you can indicate that you want to move forward, but you're going to ask the seller for some concessions, like making repairs or lowering the price to cover the cost of unanticipated problems. From there, you're going to wait for your formal mortgage approval or, or loan commitment, as it's called. Now, most contracts are contingent on your ability to secure a mortgage within about 30 days. So in order to get full loan approval or, or mortgage commitment, your lender is going to ask you for a lot of stuff, documents, bank statements, tax returns, pay stubs, and so forth. They're also going to pull your credit report from all three major credit bureaus. Now, you don't necessarily have to have perfect credit to get a loan, but your credit score is going to need to be decent, and you can't be currently late on, on any payments. And most good lenders are going to help you overcome any little basic common credit issues. Your lender is also going to order an appraisal of the house. And the appraisal tells the lender what the home they're going to loan money on is worth. You know, the home must appraise for at least the proposed loan, uh, loan amount in order for them to, uh, to approve this loan. The cost for an appraisal is going to be somewhere between three and five hundred dollars, and that's part of your loan application fee. Uh, the lender will also normally require a survey of the property, and that shows the, the lot boundaries and you know, any encroachments such as neighbors' fences and so forth, easements and, and the like. Uh, the cost of your survey is going to be between three and five hundred dollars. So you can start to see that in addition to your down payment, there are a number of small costs that you pay in addition uh, that, that can really add up. Um, so we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Once all of these steps are cleared, there's not a whole lot more to do until closing day. You know, normally, say three days before closing, your lender is going to provide a proposed final closing statement. And this shows all the costs associated with the, per, uh, with the purchase and shows the credits that you have on deposit uh, and the final amount of funds you need to bring to the closing. You know, this is going to include your down payment, lender closing costs, county and state taxes, closing fees from the title company, you know, and other miscellaneous fees. And as you saw earlier, there are a lot of small fees and expenses that can really add up to a lot of money. So you can expect your closing costs to range from between 3 to 4% of the purchase price. Uh, these funds you're going to need in addition to your down payment. So, finally, after 30 or 40 days from the day you make your offer, closing day happens. Now, on closing day, you and your broker are going to visit the home for a final walkthrough before you sign any paperwork. And the walkthrough ensures that nothing's changed from the time you made your offer and the home's been maintained. Um, now, the final step is the actual closing. You're going to sign your paperwork and pay the balance of the money you owe. And this is normally done at a title company uh, or at a real estate attorney's office. So the funds for the balance of your down payment and closing costs are probably going to be wired. You're going to wire those to the attorney or the title company the day before closing. And at the closing, you've probably heard that there's a lot of paperwork to sign, right? Well, that would be correct. So. Uh, there's tons of stuff to sign, big stacks of paperwork, your hand's going to get tired. However, in about an hour, after an hour of signing, you're going to be done. You're going to get the keys to your new home, and you are now going to officially be a homeowner. So you can see there are lots of steps involved in buying a home, and we've really just kind of scratched the surface. Your broker has literally hundreds of responsibilities, phone calls and emails to manage to ensure a smooth, on-time closing. And you can start to see why working with an inexperienced agent is probably a really bad idea. So, now, 
A couple of key things to remember once you've officially become a homeowner. You want to tell your friends and family what an awesome real estate broker you have and make sure that they know how to reach him or her um, for their real estate needs. And make sure you write a great review for your broker, telling the whole world that they'd be crazy not to use him or her uh, when they need to buy or sell a home. And the third thing is have a nice big housewarming party. Okay? Invite your agent. He brings food. Okay? We hope you found that this video is helpful as you start your, uh, your home search. And remember, that helps just a phone call away. You can reach me directly seven days a week. You can call me at 407-383-9302. Again, that number is 407-383-9302. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you, requ you request your free home buyer's guide, which includes information on special first-time home buyer financing and even some no money down programs. So make sure you get your, um, your home buying guide. Just fill out the form next to me here. We look forward to helping you with your, your next home purchase and providing you with fast, friendly real estate service.